Um, I took a course. Write that down. I took a course um, immediately after starting, and I got my first brand deal with 2,000 followers. So that kind of tells you that you don't need millions or thousands, hundreds of thousands of followers to make money. You just have to have value in your brand. So people found value in who I was, and they believed in what I was doing. So that was easy for me to monetize. Don't ask people for advice. Go pay for it and invest in yourself. He's like, oh, you need to stop eating cheeseburgers. Like People say stuff like that. And I'm like, yo, like, I'm on the Stairmaster as you wrote that. Like, that's crazy. Right. And he's like, people, like I said, have assumptions about you. Mm -hmm. And I like to educate. And I say, I'm so sorry that you have, that you're hurting internally and that you're out here bullying because you don't feel good about yourself. And I really genuinely believe that you should do that work. So I'd say, like, I'm, I'm sorry that you felt a need to troll me. Right. But for me, I don't care what anybody thinks about me. And that's, that's my power. Hey, listen, I'm coming. I'm coming right now. Come on in, huh? Truly, truly honored and blessed to spend and invest time with these guests. But most importantly, spend time and invest time with you too. If you don't know who I am, I'm Rob De La Rosa, the bald-headed Dominican from the Bronx. And all you gotta do to help me, help you, is like, comment, subscribe. All right, here's what it is, you <laughs> lovely people. I, I, All right. Some of you see me interview some people that I know or don't know. I'm super comfortable when I got someone in the room <laughs> that I know, because history is always better than you know new introductions at times, yeah. I guess, right? So if you don't know, my name is Rob De La Rosa. You're listening to In The Living Room Podcast, where we learn, laugh, and heal. And today, we're going to have a beautiful conversation with a friend of mine who actually hit my line when she saw what I was doing and said, hey... Do you know what you're doing? Not that if I know what I'm doing, but how to monetize what I'm doing. A content creator, face-driven, beautiful person. She's a singer. She does a lot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only, Leslie D. Tuck. Let's clap it up for this lovely lady in the building. <laughs> how are you? I am amazing. Thank you for inviting me onto your podcast. Sure. I'm excited to be here for sure. So, Leslie, look, um, I'm going to be one to say... I remember when you started your journey, right? So content creation is something that the vast majority of people want to do, mm -hmm. I guess, because it looks easy mm -hmm. to some degree, but not a lot of people know how to monetize mm -hmm. all right, what they're doing. So you went from working a job that was okay mm -hmm. to doing about 10000 a month-ish, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. See how she did that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like It might have changed from the last time we had that conversation. <laughs> So the reason why I want to know how did you get there? Because I know people are watching and people think they need a super big following, mm -hmm. right? Uh, do you need a big following? Can you maximize with a small following? Please let us know how you were able to do that. Okay, just to be completely transparent, when I first started doing content creation, I wasn't doing it. I didn't know people made money. Someone was like, you're funny. Like, start a YouTube channel. And I said, oh, okay. Mm. And I started doing stupid videos like, oh, trips to Walmart. Like, they're annoying kids. Uh, like, that's what it started to mm. be. But then I was like, oh, people are, like, buying Lamborghinis and getting things sent to them. I was not a YouTube watcher. I just did it because I have a great personality. Mm. So um, I took a course. Write that down. <laughs> I took a course um, immediately after starting. And I got my first brand deal with 2,000 followers. So that kind of tells you that you don't need millions or thousands, hundreds of thousands of followers to make money. You just have to have value in your brand. So people found value in who I was and they believed in what I was doing. So that was easy for me to monetize, right? Um, another thing was is that I learned about affiliate marketing from a, say it with me, a course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I spent thousands of dollars on courses because I needed to know how to make money because I was confused. I was like, if they're making money, I can make money. So I learned about affiliate marketing. I learned uh, just how to become a content creator, the, all the ways that you can make money. Um, so I started following people who are doing what I want, right? And it's not just all let me vlog and people are going to love what I'm doing. They're going to want to know what you believe 
and then they're going to follow you, right? So um, a lot of the people that follow me are engaging with me and brands find that more powerful than how many people are following you. Mm. Um, So the way I was able to monetize is because I learned and I took my time to figure out like, this is how you make money. This is what you do, A, B, C, D. I studied it and then I put it to work. So a lot of times people ask me for advice all the time on how to make money. And it's a little bit frustrating because I could tell you everything I do from point blank period to now and y'all will not even attempt to make a video <laughs> so Stupid shot at me y'all <laughs> <laughs> but now i'm at a point where you know you get to the point where if people ask you for help or if they have yeah. questions you kind of have to start charging people because they will take advantage of your kindness i can spend hours with someone and then they will not follow what you tell them to mm. do right so you know you want to be friendly you want to help the world and you know in my background in network marketing I didn't care about money at all. I was like, oh my God, let me help you go on your first flight. Ah!" Like, (laughs) I did not care about bread. Like, I don't care about fashion. I did not care to take pictures. I was traveling. I went on, what, 30 vacations in three years. Mm -hmm. I was not posting on Instagram. I did not care. I was just doing it because of what I loved. Mm -hmm. And um, so I don't remember what your question was, but <laughs> um, you know, I, I, love it. <laughs> I took a course and and I followed the course and yeah. that's the most valuable piece of information that I can give to you. Mm. If someone tells you to do something, follow it. Like the roadmap is already done. You know, you can go your whole life trying to figure out on your own or you can pay a thousand dollars and that can pay you 10 times over. Mm-hmm. So that was and but I learned that from my background in doing personal development, going to trainings and things like that. So I'm lucky to have had the opportunity to be around those type of people. Right. So um, as far as like, how do you monetize? Take a course, find someone who's already doing it and follow the course, okay. you know, because like I said, it would take hours for me to tell you how to make a brand deal. There's pitching, how to edit, what's a thumbnail. So There's so there. many, mil- There's a million things <laughs> that you need to do. But honestly, all the people who have made big brands, even Mr. Beast, he was doing it. You know who Mr. Beast is, of right? Course. The top YouTuber ever. Right, right. He went from making videos for like five, six, seven years as a teenager to now being the biggest YouTuber ever. Right. So everybody's journey is going to look different, but don't ask people for advice. Go pay for it and invest in yourself. Mm. So don't ask people for advice. Go pay for it and then take the advice. All right. So look, there was so much you did there. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Because <laughs> I know who I have with me. The first question I have mm-hmm. is... When you say 2,000 followers, was that 2,000 followers on social media or you had 2,000 subscribers on YouTube? I had 200 followers on YouTube. I had and maybe- 2,000 on social? I had social? maybe seven, maybe 1,000 on Instagram. Uh-huh. And then I had, um, I don't think I was big on TikTok quite yet. So combined So I think it was 2, like 000. YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest. So it was just like- What? Yeah. I, I didn't have a big following. Okay. So give me now how you start doing- from I'm just going to walk around and do funny stuff to then being intentional with your content. Mm-hmm. And when this deal comes, how is it in an email? Because here's what's happening for me. I'm getting like random, hey, I'll see your page email. I'll collab with whatever. Hit this link. And I'm mass scared. Like, nope. I feel like if I hit this link, this mm-hmm. is a spam email. So how is it structured? Is there a number you can call somebody? Because that's the kind of style. I, I want to call you to make sure you're real. Like, yo, yeah. who are you? How did you find me, et cetera? So give me the video or was it, I guess, let me let me let out another question. Now that you answered that question, it was 2,000 total in, on social. Yes. It wasn't like one. Di- okay. No, I had, I was not monetized on YouTube. Okay. And I was so making brand So give me deals. that deal, that mm-hmm. brand deal that first opened the door. Mm-hmm. And was it email? How much was it? Okay. I'm going to okay. give you guys... Um, some clarity with like how it happened right Mm -hmm. so if you're starting on your youtube journey and you want to be a beauty influencer specifically because that's a little bit more where i started right hair products makeup everybody wanted to be the makeup girly right Mm -hmm. there's resources like influencer you can sign up for influencer you do a survey if you meet the requirements they send you free product not everybody who's getting free product is getting it from Oh, I'm on a PR list. I didn't start getting on PR list until like maybe middle of last year. So there's services where um, like Ipsy, for example, I'm pretty sure I put Amanda on that. Ipsy, um, BoxyCharm, they give you like $200 worth of product for like $25 a month. So you get that and you use your money to the best of your ability because not everybody has thousands of dollars to do these hauls. Or you can even um, 
use your own resources. Um, when I quit my job without a plan, I said, I'm going to take $1,000 for my 401k and mm. I'm going to keep using that $1,000. So I'm going to buy clothes, plus size clothes, and I'm going to do hauls and then I'm going to return it. And that's what I did because I was broke. Genius. Yeah. So I wanted to be a fashion plus size, confident, girly, and I wanted people to feel confident with me. So that was the whole goal. So whether that was beauty, skincare, hair, I just wanted girls to look at me and be like, wow, if she could do it, so can I, right? Mm. So influencer, boxy charm, ipsy if you're into beauty, right? Um, influencer is great because you can get food, clothes, shoes, things like that. They have right. access to that and it's free. That. Yeah. Um, so that's how I started getting product and I started reviewing it. Now, I started getting into shapewear, waist trainers, things like that. Um, I bought one. The company liked what I did. They emailed me, right? So you're getting your first, like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> what do you know? Right, so they me up, they uh, me up. People are, what do I do? Right. What do I do? Google, what do I do mm. when I get an email? No information. Then you see these ads. Join my course if you want to know how to make money. Oh, right away, right away, uh, those ads come, bro. Oh, let, oh, shoot! You know you. Oh, he has three hundred thousand followers on YouTube. He has this. He has that. His name is Sean Cannell. Think Media. That was like Think the first media. course I bought. Mm -hmm, I got that. Course. I I bought it. I took his five day free course. I said I'm gonna buy his course. Boom, bought it. Didn't care. I don't know what to do when I get a brand deal. So I respond to them. I think, like I said, I didn't have a lot of followers. So for someone like me to get paid for a ten minute video to review a waist trainer for like two hundred dollars, that's like. <gasps> Oh my God, I don't even have, like, <laughs> right, I just made $200 in an hour, right, <laughs> period, right, right, right? Right, right? Even to this day, like, there's times where I make $500 in an hour or $500 in 20 minutes because I can film a video in 10 minutes, edit it in 10 minutes, and then that's $500, right? So I could do, like, 30 of those in a month, and I'm still not full-time worker, right? Mm. Um, so I'm, I know I'm jumping around, but so the first step was I got an email. Correct. Um, I responded, didn't know what... I didn't know what, con there was no contract. None of that was even there. I had no idea. People even did contracts. I was just like, whatever, take right. it. Yeah, I'm taking the money. I'm right. getting a brand new. <laughs> right. um, so I was so excited and I just did it. And then that brand deal turned into like more of a consistent thing. They're like, look, we have affiliate marketing and that's how I got into affiliate marketing. So with that waist trainer alone, because I'm thick and I'm cute, whatever. People want to look like me sometimes, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> they see the waist trainer I'm wearing. They want to buy that waist trainer. So at one point with affiliate marketing, just with that waist trainer brand, I was making like $100 a month off of just commission. You mm. know, they would buy six or seven waist trainers and they would, you know, slip me my commission. And till this day, I'll randomly get like a $20 check from them. Mm -hmm. And I haven't done that video in like four years. Like it's been a long time. So if for whatever reason, people decide to search up that waist trainer again and I pop up first, you know, then we get into CEO and all that. I mean, SEO. SEO. But we'll talk about that later. Mm -hmm. um, or we won't, we won't talk about that later, by course. Uh, <laughs> 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 all that. Um, so once you get into all those things, you get excited, you do it, you get a good relationship with them, and then you're making money residually off of just a video you made years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my first brand deal. It was really cheap. It wasn't like tons of money or anything like right. that. I've taken cheaper brand deals after that, too. I've taken brand deals for $75. Heck, I've taken brand deals for $25, but if Cream of Nature, the brand that you see in the store, reaches out to you and says, hey, we want to post you on your page... But we only have a budget of twenty five dollars, which you know they have more of. But just for, for example, I'm not that they're. I'm just using this as an example. Um, you're gonna take it because for me, I'm like, oh, exposure. If I'm doing hair care products for them, then you know who reached out to me after that, Revlon, and then you know who reached out. So mm. all these times, it's like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing out of faith that people are gonna see it and God is gonna put it in front of the right people, right? So you got to do stuff that you like to do for fun. Like you have to be like, I'm wearing this this yitty bodysuit link in bio right and people are like oh that's cute i'm gonna buy it and you're gonna have faith that god is gonna put it in front of the people who need that at that time so i got into affiliate marketing <laughs> um after taking a course and um after that it was just like i tell people all the time like you don't have your email in your um bio how are people gonna find you to email you for brand deals if you don't have any even in your link tree you have a link tree what you want them to dm you then it's creepy now they're in your request is this even real? Mm. If they're not like in blue check mark, this is like, me, oh, are they real? Let me check if my email. My <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm getting, I'm getting a session too. This is, this is for me. You know like, what I'm saying? Like, like, I don't know. Oh, like, what is this? This is a road. A roadcaster. All right. So here? this is road. 
if Road wanted to reach out to you and give you free product, they mm. don't have no way of contacting mm. you because you didn't put your email anywhere for them to find you, and they're not gonna take the time to search you. They don't care. I gotta, I gotta update my email after this episode. You got my yes, uh huh. I would suggest having a separate email from your regular personal email, as then like have a separate. Like I have a Leslie D. Clab at Gmail. I don't have like a at Leslie D. Sure. Club yet. Um, so. I have like a separate email for my assistant. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times if you're nervous to pitch, right? Flex. No, 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 no. no. Before I had an assistant, I had an assistant email because I would be like, I would want to decline brand deals, but I didn't want to decline brand deals as myself. So, That's a gem. <laughs> so I would like, That's I would email gem. as my assistant and be like, hi, my name is Alicia. Pack it up. <laughs> <laughs> this is my assistant. Or if it's a big deal and you're afraid, you could be like, yo, um, if let's say it's like a big company like Nike, oh my mm -hmm. gosh, I want them to think right. I have an assistant. Mm -hmm. So, hey, this is Leslie's assistant. What is your budget for this? So now they don't even think like I there's a middle person, but it's just me. But it gives me that comfort of knowing that they think like I don't really have much to do with it and they think I have management. Cause they'll offer you more money if you think if they think you're managed. So um that's Nugget, gold nugget, period. Uh, <laughs> I love that. Um, I so love that. Uh, I don't mm. know if I answered your question, but basically, uh, <laughs> but basically, you know, there's all those things oh, that you, okay. you know, you can do. Um, and then you build these great relationships. My first, I wouldn't say viral. I don't think any of my videos technically went viral, but I have one video of a sports bra. Uh, my, my cousin gave it to me for Christmas and um, it has 65,000 views on it. It's pretty viral. It's no viral's like millions. I mean, not that that. I mean, but sixty. For the, here's why for I say that. For a micro, for, that's what I'm trying to say. For the following that you have to have sixty five thousand. What is that? Is it a, is it a real? What do you mean, like sixty five thousand? Oh, likes or views. What was it, that? It was sixty five thousand views on a long form video on a review for a sports bra. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's fire. And when you Google plus size she fit bra, I'm number one. If you go to YouTube, nah, let's see. Right let's see. I don't know. It's been years. It it Put right plus now. size she fit bra review. Check it out right if I'm not, now. I should be in right at least now. the first five. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. You, you look confident when you said that, mom. I'm about to catch SEO, you right now. SEO. SEO. It's been like six years. We'll see. What is it? What am I putting on Google? Put put plus size she fit bra review. Plus size she fit bra. Let's see what pops up. Review. It used to be. I used to be number one. So we'll see. Let's see. Go to. Let me see. Let me see your videos. Hello, let me see. We got to see. Let That's, me see. You went to the, I website. Went to the website. All right, go ahead. Go to the video. Let me see. What's number one when you go to videos? My girl ain't capping. There's no cap. My girl's <laughs> If you can zoom that in, I can stop playing with my shit. <laughs> stop playing with the queen. That's fire. I already know that. 2020. What, how, many, how many times am I there? One, two, three. Four, nah, three. that's fire. How many videos of mine? I'll chill. Stop flexing. <laughs> Stop flexing. Stop. Yeah, you so, not. You come up another time, a third time. You come up three times. You know why? I took a course. Mm. And they taught me what SEO was. Mm. And they taught me how to use the description. They taught me the tools. Use vidIQ to make sure that you know if your video is searchable. Pay for yourself. Pay for those tools. Mm. So I can have... What, I have like 30,000 followers all together on all my platforms now. Mm -hmm. And I can still make mo more money. I make more money th than people who have 200,000 followers. They don't know what they're doing. They don't want to They don't want to figure it out. They're like, oh, I put the TikTok shop stuff and nobody's buying anything. And it's like, yo, you got to be patient. Mm -hmm. And you also have to check your mindset. There's just a completely different thing. So basically to answer your question, if they email you, you email <laughs> back. If it says like Dolce & Gabbana at Gmail, that's not Dolce & Gabbana. That's not them. For sure. Right? Um, if you want to. <laughs> not at the Gmail, so I'm slapping them through the email. <laughs> um, they'll send you, I'm going to give you another nugget, you know, re respond to all the emails. If you don't feel comfortable, if it doesn't feel good with your do gut, just put it to the, right, or do it yourself. Like you, I feel like you, you know, posture, feel me? whatever, who cares? Got uh, I, I don't, I'm not the same like personality type as you, so I'm a little bit more like, <laughs> you know, um, I'm a little bit more nervous. <laughs> But uh, yeah, for sure. Answer every email. See what they're talking about. Okay. Make sure you don't sign any contracts that says in perpetuity, perpetual rights. Sure. So I'm going to explain that to you guys real quick. If you get something from a brand and they ask for perpetuity or perpetual rights for your usage rights, that means that they have lifetime access to your content. Um, which means that if you're not famous now, but you're famous two years from now and Let's say, for example, I do a brand deal for a lip gloss company and then you find out that they're using baby skin 
like in the third world country or something. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I love this lip gloss. Two years later, they have rights to use that. Even if I don't agree what they're doing, even if they decide that the CEO is racist, now I'm stuck because, mm. you know, I so signed my rights away. And that's something that I'm giving as a jewel now because you don't know that when you're um, looking at contracts. So I always go to what control F perpetuity, perpetual, all of that just to see mm. um, until you can afford a lawyer or whatever the case is. Um, so yeah, just look at the contracts and don't be nervous. Take it gotcha. in, you know, I'm with you. Yeah. So here's a question I have, right? Mm -hmm. Cause, Cause I love, that's what I love about Les. If y'all, <laughs> right, if you haven't done it now, stop right now. Cause in the first 15, 19 minutes of this episode, <laughs> She done gave so many gems. Do us a favor. Because this is what I forget to do. And I got to get better at this. It's your favorite podcast by now. You can tell that um, I got people here that are going to give quality. But you got to like, subscribe, and share the content. Like, genuinely. This is doing something for me. All right? If this is helping you or you have a friend who wants to get started in this field and get some understanding of how this works, share this with your friends. And then do me a favor. Follow up with those people. And make sure they watch it so they don't be out there looking crazy and asking you questions when you could just direct them to Leslie and Leslie will make sure they get a course. You know what I'm saying? I should like, just make my own you course. You should just make your own course. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's in the works. It's in the works. We need, we need all that. The SEO. So we're going to get into that stuff. But here's what I want to know. Because mm -hmm. there was so much given. Mm -hmm. When you decided to say, okay, I'm going to put up now. Nah, this is the part that... Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. The confidence behind going, I'm going to have fun, fun content mm -hmm. to then I'm going to go put on a sports bra, mm -hmm. right? I want to be a plus size model kind of, mm -hmm. I want to say an icon because you're going on the way, but it's definitely an image that you carry now. Mm -hmm. What's the conversation like with family? Mm -hmm. Are you dating anyone at the moment <laughs> and then goes, nah, you about to go put on a bra? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is, is that the decision you make by yourself and you go, I don't care what anybody thinks or there's a prerequisite before you take this idea and go, all right, let me go first talk to the people I care about because mm -hmm. those, what they think about me matters mm -hmm. opposed to what the public eye thinks about me. Okay. So let's, let's talk about it. Let's get into it. Um, I've been told my whole life that I can't do shit. Like mm. I've never been able to live my own life. So my whole perspective about the sports bra because i was in lingerie before i was in sports bra you know i i was doing lingerie hauls because for me i have to give other women permission to be confident in their bodies because i already am confident in my body but i have to show people that i'm confident in my body so they get confused and i'm talking about all body types there's thin people that look up to me for being body confident and there's plus size people who look up to me for being confident um but when it came to the sports bra it's like damn like every other skinny girl can wear a sports bra in the gym why am i any different like, mm. why does my body offend you? So I didn't feel a need to have a conversation because it's normal to wear a sports bra in the gym. And 90% of the time, nobody cares. Like, if I went, I'm sure that if I saw you at a gym and you didn't know me and I came up with a sports bra and leggings. <laughs> I was going to say if I was wearing a sports bra. No, <laughs> <laughs> no but if I came to the gym and you saw me, you never knew me, you wouldn't, like, be like, why is she wearing Facts. that? Nobody cares. Um, and then when it came to, like, you know, I always had a big chest, so I always, like, had V-neck. I never felt comfortable um, with my neck being like covered up now it's funny because I'm the most covered up now um which I'll get into a little bit later but no no conversations needed to be had you're either going to support me or you're not going to support me and if you love me you're not you're going to know that I'm not out here were you dating somebody oh um for sure I mean when I started my channel I was dating a bodybuilder he I was plus size and I was on a, a fitness journey and he was trying to help me uh go through that and yeah, like I, I went on a whole weight loss thing, which I completely, my mindset on like weight loss and dieting is completely different um, than what it used to be. Someone coming in. Is that Ian? Let's clap it up for my yeah. man. Let's clap it up for the <laughs> We appreciate you coming, my boy. We appreciate you coming. It's all good. Hello. You good on that side. You can come over here, whatever you want to do. I'm listening. Um, okay. Um, so my perspective on weight loss and um, body image and all that has changed since. Okay. But yeah, I was dating someone. He don't, he don't care. I mean, all right. If I'm dating a man. Right. And I'm doing lingerie hauls. Okay. Right. And you're like, dang, like that's. Because some men are like, no, like, I don't want my girl. I don't want my people to see what I got. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't date me. Fair and, you know, because I'm not married to you. Now, if I'm married to you and, you know, we're in church, like, I'm in church now. So 
it's funny because a lot of the people at church support my content, even though like sometimes, you know, I'm a little bit more showing of my skin a little bit more than people would like. But at the same time, it's like, I'm not out here with like, yeah, little Kim. I'm not doing that. <laughs> right. I'm not like, right, yeah, right. daddy. Like, I don't have an OnlyFans. <laughs> I'm not like that. Right. You are going to be like, dang, like she's in lingerie, but she's so cute. Right. I'm not like, oh my, yeah, my daddy's going to love this. Like, ew. Like, I'm not like that. And even when I do photo shoots, like my first um, website was Sav Savage X Fenty, right? Oh, I was featured fire. on, yeah, Rihanna's. That was like my first like, oh, Ashley. Um, yeah, I and that. I know, Come I know. Now, People don't know a lot about. It. Uh, <laughs> that was my first like feature, and it was lingerie, but it's tasteful. And my grandmother had to get used to it. She's like, you know, I watch her stuff, but I see that you're not trying to be sexual mm. because it's not who. I mean, I'm not <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, hold on. No, I'm not. I lied. <laughs> it's not that I'm not sexual. I'm okay. just not doing it for the men. I'm very much doing it for my female base. Female base is going to be like, oh, why is she doing that? Coffee. If I'm doing like all this extra stuff, it's going to be like, why is she doing all that extra stuff? Like, that's weird. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, ladies, this is how this bra fits. If you want to get it, this is what it's going to look like on my body type. Maybe it will look better if you have a smaller chest or maybe it will look better if you have smaller hips, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's informational. It's not for attention. Um, and you, you know, my whole... I'm working on my brand, but my whole brand is confidence advocacy. You know what I mean? And if I, I'm a big advocate of, I'm not going to ask you to do anything that I wouldn't do. So I'm not going to tell you to go out in a bikini and you never see me in bikinis. Like I have a billion of them. And if I'm offending you with my body, like you have to do internal work because you don't know my story. You don't know that I play tennis tw tw three times a week, you know, with the coach. You don't know that I do the stair master for 30 minutes, four times a week. You don't know those things about me by looking at me. You have to really get to know me. So I'm trying to change people's mindset on what health is and what healthy means and what BMI came from, which is inherently racist. So that's like my passion, you know, to change people's mindset and thought process when it comes to body types. But I don't know if I answered your question again. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, I don't care what people think. I think that was the question. How do you have those conversations? So yeah, before um, I, you started posting, like, I intentionally like, don't date like people who are like really high. Like if they have morality clauses, I dated someone who was like, "Oh, I, I think that you would have to change your content if we ever became exclusive because of morality." And my wife can't be out there publicly. You know, CEOs and people high up in mm, you know mm. their job. I've dated a lot, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I've had that issue, so I try to stay away from like teachers. I try to stay away from people with like crazy morality clauses and stuff like that because okay. I don't know where my brand is going to take me. But now that I'm in church, everything's really changed. I'm not really doing the same sort of content. So okay, so yeah, I'm glad that you went there because I don't want to pivot there just yet. Mm -hmm. So you start posting these kind of pictures. Mm -hmm. You don't give. You don't need no approval, right? No. Fire. Now, was there any shaming online? Oh, that, hold on, hold on. We know we're gonna get there. <laughs> that did something to you. Like, what was the first time that you posted somebody and kind of got like that hate response just because you're being yourself? How um, did that transpire to you? Like. I mean, I've been hating on my whole life. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't care about the haters. Um, Not once did you post. No, I mean, I think you? the scariest part is like when I'm on live, like TikTok live. They they kind of get scary on there, so I kind of stop going on live on TikTok because um, I get penalized if I say anything. Like they'll block my whole account on TikTok or whatever, so I've stopped doing that. But I don't think there's. I kind of try to educate. Like I don't ever like my mom is so proud of me about that because my mom is ready to fight. You know, and I'm not, you know, I'm not from the projects. I'm a country girl. Um, but she commends me on the fact that I educate, you know, and I'm like, he's like, oh, you need to stop eating cheeseburgers. Like people say stuff like that. Crazy. And I'm like, yo, like I'm on the Stairmaster as you wrote that. Like, that's crazy. Right. And he's like, people, like I said, have assumptions about you. Mm -hmm. And I like to educate and I say, I'm so sorry that you have that you're hurting internally and that you're out here bullying because you don't feel good about yourself. And I really genuinely believe that you should do that work. So I'd say like, I'm, I'm sorry that you felt a need to troll me. Right. But for me, I don't care what anybody thinks about me. And that's, that's my power. That's fire. It's always been my heart. Like my friend, you know, Axel. Sure. He's like, so when did Ax you? Yeah. Hi, Axel. Remember, he was like, when did you decide that you're that girl? Right. When did you decide that you're fire? Right. And I was like, great question. I said to him, I said, I'm not fire. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I don't care to be fire. I'm just me. I'm just myself. I'm just being me. And with me just being me and being unapologetic, that's what makes you think I'm fire or makes you think that I think I'm fire. I don't care to be fire. I don't care to be a baddie. And I don't care to be 
the star of the world. I don't care about that. I'm, I'm more care about my peace. I care that I'm helping people. So I went my whole life trying to get my parents approval, the people around me approval, mostly parents and, you know, teachers, mm -hmm. uh, people that I look up to mentors. Mm -hmm. I cared about what people thought. But once I let that go, if I don't care about my parents thing, I certainly don't care what any of y'all think. For sure. When did that happen? So this is why I say that. Um, because mom wanted to fight. Mm -hmm. I remember you posting content with dad. Like mm -hmm. you posted an outfit mm -hmm. and dad was like, yo, I don't know if I like this outfit. Right? <laughs> right? Like, yeah. I remember that content. So when did that switch happen? Was that a, also a he, conversation? That was or already, like, no. I don't have to have conversations with people who are not taking care of me anymore. Like I respect you. I love you. You're my parents. But I pay my own bills. And I'm not out here having sex on camera. Not that there's anything wrong with having sex on camera. I'm just saying I'm not doing that. <laughs> I think it's um, my. With, <laughs> Hold on now. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, with that being said, you have to remember that my parents respect me because I respect them, mm. and I'm open to their opinions. You don't like what I'm wearing? I hear you. I'm open to that. So you're gonna still wear it? Yes. <laughs> like you know what I mean I hear you I understand like what you think and I understand what you feel mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that I'm going to change my comfort level to make you feel more comfortable now you have to decide do you accept me at this point because mm -hmm. I love you and I accept you for how you are heck I don't like that you you know dye your beard or whatever right my dad does lo love you daddy but he dyed <laughs> his beard once and I was like I hate that and if he's gonna continue to do it I'm not gonna be like oh I can't be around you like right, no right. like I love you right it, um it. so if my family decided to disown me, then they would just disown me. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I don't do enough. Fair enough. I don't, you know, they they believe in what I'm doing. We've had tough conversations and I listen and I hear you, but then I keep it moving, you mm -hmm. know? So I, I don't, there was no pivot. It just was what it was. Was what it was. And I always was a confident girl. There was no like moment of, oh, you know, I turned 26 and this happened and like I be, thought I was sex. Like, no, I never had fat girl personality. Even in elementary school, middle school, nobody bullied me. I didn't walk around like I was fat. I didn't walk around like I was gross. Everybody didn't. I, I feel like people were blind to it because I didn't dress. I, I don't know. Like I, I put, took pride in who I was. And I didn't know all those years that I had PCOS, which is a new thing, which means I have a hormonal imbalance mm -hmm. and I don't have really choice. Like you're born with it. Mm -hmm. It's not something that, you know. I didn't know that, mm. but I also was too busy worried about things at home to be worried about what I look like or whatever. I was going through other traumatic things, you know, worried about if I'm going to drop out of high school to take care of family. Like I was thinking about those things. Mm. I wasn't thinking about, am I fat? Um, until I maybe got into college, they were like, you got to lose weight to play this role. And I said, I'm not losing no weight. And who still got the role? Me. Because I don't care about what you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I've always been like that. Yo, I'm going to tell you right now, Leslie, you're calm. I'm confident right now. Bro. Like, I just <laughs> like ooze some confidence being in a room with you. So look, two things that you said there, because I know we're saying a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Saying that you then went to church and your content is no longer the same, mm -hmm. all right? Was that? Strictly only because you went to church, and then I want to talk about SEO and kind of how you got to like. Sure. Yeah. So you okay. want to talk about church first? I want to talk about that transition. So from okay. wearing. Oh yeah. Um. Nobody said anything to me. It just when you go to church and you get close to God, you have a relationship. And sometimes you look in the mirror, and God will say, "Do you really want to wear that?" And it's not really like God speaking out loud. And sometimes I feel crazy. What do you sound like? I Ayo. feel like I I always like. So when I quit my job, I told you that I was at church and God was like, quit your job. The sermon wasn't about quitting. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is the part right here. So two things, right? Mm -hmm. Like changing your your um, the way you dress and that. Like quitting your job. Mm -hmm. Let's elaborate. I don't even have to cut you mm -hmm. off. You quit your job and said, I'm going to create content. I did. With no plan. Yes. With no blueprint. Right. Okay. I want to know. Because here's why mm -hmm. I want to get on that. I think that's crazy. Mm -hmm. I think. I don't think you. I don't. I don't suggest it. Good. It's not something I would suggest anybody unless you have like real faith. But and that's how I want to lead into your faith because that is scary. Because anybody's watching this and you at home and you are talking to your mom like I'm gonna be the next content creator, <laughs> right? And you at your mom's house. And no one, no one suggests you just to do that. So I want to speak on when you change your content and mm -hmm. in quitting. Like, what did you do? And then faith. How did that play along to be here today? I did sort of have a plan. You know, okay. it wasn't like just like okay, I'm just gonna quit. Um, I met a boy. <laughs> I was all in love and stuff. 
could be that. that but he was never, I was never in a relationship. It's always the worst. Those situationships will kill you. Ooh. Those situationships will kill you. You be in love with someone you never no, you're not even public. Nobody even knows. But Ooh. you be bro- broken hearted. So before that, no, yeah, no, those situationships will have you on your knees, but um, hmm. but it never got physical, which is another thing that's like insane. I had a really good mental connection with this guy. Yeah. So you fell in love with somebody, yeah. someone y'all were never intimate. No, there was never. No, I was abstinent. The for like... The pee never went in the hole, and you fell in love with this Let guy. Let me just look in the camera. I was abstinent that guy got for a like great brain, bro. Like pause. <laughs> <laughs> That I got it. What? No, I was absent for like three years. And then, um, yeah, and then I have one slip up and then I remained to be like absent after that. Mm. So he was a slipper? No, no, I never was intimate with him, but I was in love with that man. Let me tell you something. When someone can challenge you mentally and they can up, like, they can give you lessons, mm-hmm. I mean, they're there for a season or a reason, right? Mm-hmm. He was like the reason why I fell in love with God in that journey. So it was like he was helping me with financial advice. He was mentoring me, but he also was like telling me the good stuff. And I'm very, my love language is very much tell me how much you love me. And he was saying all the right stuff. But um, basically this man, I was having a tough situation where I wanted to be closer to God, but I didn't understand. And I never talked to him because I thought that when you get blessed is because you earned it and you need to work so hard that God is like, you know what? I'm so proud of you. Here's your blessings. And he taught me that that's not how God works, Mm. that he promises us that all our needs will be met regardless. And if you look at Jesus, all the people that were, was his disciples were like the worst people. They were not the best like character people. So I was in my car after talking to him. It was such a deep conversation. He was like, how are you? And he, he said, God told me to tell you that he wants to have a better relationship with you. Mind you, he's a pastor now. So he was already like in the faith base and he was, a CEO. So he was like in the business, like business and you know, mm-hmm. everything you want, a girl want a man, a man. Right. Um, so, um, he left me or I left him. I should say I, we, I left that situation. Um, cause I just wasn't getting what I need anymore, but I never left the church. I started mm-hmm. going to church every Sunday, ever since we had the conversation, it was a Saturday. Um, I swear that I heard God say to me, like, I'm here. I've always been here. And that was the for me because I started calling my friends like, was that God? Am I crazy? Am I schizophrenic? Like, I don't get it. Yeah. And I wasn't in church. It's just it came all over me. And like I said, I never left church after that. Um, he was like my stepping stone. And then one day I was in church and I swear God was like, quit your job, quit your job. It's just everything in my being. And I was going to therapy because I hated my job. I was so depressed. I was so unhappy. I was being micromanaged and I do not work like that. And I was the best. I was the best in my office. Number one quota maker, Mm -hmm. but micromanaged. So I'm like, work on everybody else. So I was getting offended and I just couldn't. I was unhappy. Um, And I put in my two weeks like that Monday. I was like, yeah, like I'm going to listen to my gut. Um, I looked at my 401k. I don't suggest this. <laughs> Do not take out your 401k, guys. Who do I pay a penalty? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I was like, I will get my 401k back. I will. It doesn't matter. So I was like, let me take whatever's at my 401k. I didn't have a lot. I think I had like 20k. When then they had to take tax out. I think I got like 15k. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I went cold turkey. Quit. Um, I was making the same amount already on social media. I'm glad you said that clarity i'm glad you said that. i was already making the same amount i was making at my job on youtube and instagram and affiliate marketing and all the other s- stuff that i was doing so don't be like i'm gonna quit my job and i have nothing going i already have a youtube channel i was already doing it for years and i gotcha. quit because i believed in myself and mm-hmm. i believed that i could you know do more if i had more time if i wasn't mentally stressed all the time so i quit I went and I started working 16 hour days, film, 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 every single thing, freaking out, lack mindset. I was so afraid that if I didn't do everything I needed to do, and I was already in church, but I still, you have to, it takes time to unlearn Mm. that, oh, I have to be in control of everything. I did like that for two weeks and I was like, you know what, God, like, I don't know, (laughs) I'm not doing no more of this. I'm going to relax. I'm going to create when I want to create. So made no money January. I was like, you know what? Like, whatever I'm doing is still not working. So whatever. It was one month. And I was like, you know, I'm going to chill out. February, I was like, I'm just, I'm going to wake up when I want to wake up. I'm going to give myself time, work less, but I'm going to do the content. I'm going to put in the work. I'm going to be consistent, but I'm not going to stress out. Brand deal. Another brand deal. The less I worked, the more opportunities came. And I was like, yo, God, I don't know what you're trying to show me or if it's you or what you're trying to tell me, but I learned that 
being busy is not a flex and working hard doesn't mean you're going to make more money. Working hard is important, but how many people, you know, got three, four jobs and they still broke. So it's not always about how hard you work and uh, it's like, yo, take the courses. I took another course, Julie Solomon. <laughs> I took another course and it was more about like that internal, like, what do you want to be? What's your brand? What do you want to be about? Um, I got a random photo shoot and I never, I, this is my first modeling gig. Never wanted to be a model. I did it. Found out I didn't want to be a model. You got to learn. Hate hated it, yeah. but I did it, right? Um, and I met a contact that was so nice. I told her, I was like, I follow you. Um, and, you know, later on, we ended up connecting and she interviewed and now I consult and I would consult for multiple people. So those little things, those little stepping stones, me just relaxing, ended up bringing opportunity to me. Um, but I actually lost, I moved out of my house. I was couch surfing. I was kind of homeless for um, six months. Um I was the happiest I've ever been. I was at the most peace. And I know that sounds crazy because I was I had all this stuff happening in my house. I had a roommate at the time, all this drama and it was getting crazy. And I'm like, I don't believe in this stuff. And I'm around it and my energy was being sucked. And I just quit my job. I can't be worried about you and mm -hmm. what's happening in my house. I can't sleep because I'm not comfortable in my own home. So I left. I was sleeping on my dad's couch and I was house sitting. And I never, never had not a place to stay. Like I was house sitting and getting paid to watch people's animals. And I was making the most money I ever did, ever at that time. But I was like, I don't know where I'm going to live. So I'm not going to put, I'm not going to get an apartment and pay. I literally was making mad money, happy, didn't know what I was going to do the next day and creating. And nobody knew I didn't have a place to live. I was still creating. You could see that every time I had a YouTube video, the background changed. And everyone was like, what house is she in now? What house is she? What's this? My background changed every time. It didn't stop me. I was passionate about creating and I wanted to make sure that I continued and I wanted to be a full-time content creator. Now I don't create as much as I would like because I do more UGC. I have monthly things that I create for, which you'll never see on my page. They pay me to put it on their page and you wouldn't even know. Um, or I consult. You know, I help run people's social medias. I produce virtual conferences. I produce, you know, we're doing a course. I don't think I talked to you about that, but I was in New York during Fashion Week and we produced a project um, for Fashion Week and... That's I get to do what I want, but I get to live my life in leisure because I consult for maybe 40 hours a month and the rest of the time is up to me. 40 hours a month. That's it. That's what I'm consulting for. And if I do my own content, I kind of limit it to like five hours um, because I want to be able to create for two hours or I'll vlog sometimes. And then I only limit myself to edit for two hours. Um, and then whatever else I don't create, I don't put pressure on being consistent, like how people are like, you got to post three, six times a day. Your quality sometimes matters. Um, and I, I got an assistant because I was like, I got to be a little bit more consistent, you know. Um, and just so you guys, just to be transparent, I had a therapy appointment like last month. And she, I took a test and she went over my results. And she said that I can't work in a job where it's like super duper structured. I have to have leisure. And I'm working exactly the way I need to be working that fits with my personality. So if you're doing something that's separate or opposite of your personality, you're not going to be happy. So yes, my schedule looks like this. I wake up Monday, I go play tennis for two hours, and then I work for two hours, and then I say, hmm, what am I going to do today? Do I want to create a video? Yo, do I want to vlog? And my friends get so mad. They want, they're like, you could be famous huge. Why do I need to be famous huge? I'm okay. I'm at peace. I'm playing tennis. I have cleaners that clean my house. <laughs> that I'm okay Yo, with that. I would, I would, <laughs> I'm okay with I that. I would tell you right now, I'm so conflicted <laughs> in this conversation. I am so, I'm holding my composure because I'm like, oh my God, how the fuck? What's going on? Wow, I wish I could be that calm. I can't be that calm. You was house sitting. But there's a message here, right? There is. And I'm, I'm in awe of what's going on and how, how is this transforming in your life. The, it's transforming because... My problems are not my problems. And when you have religion or faith, my problems is now God's problems. I don't stress on things because my problems are, don't belong to me. Mm -hmm. If you read the Bible, and I'm not trying to Jesus talk you, but if you read the Bible, it's promised to you that you will not need for anything. So why am I going to stress? There are times where I'm like, mm, I have a bill to pay. I didn't make any money this month. And I'll get a brand deal for the exact amount of money that I need. But it's not my problem how I got it. It's that I got it. And sometimes having that much faith, and that takes work. 
I have some, I, I'm blessed and I'm lucky that I could be that way because I wasn't, you knew me. Right. I was highly true. anxious. Nah. Freaking facts, out. Though. I never Every partied. Second. That's I wanted fact. to go home. Uh, I was not that girl. Uh, I want. I did not like. I like to have control. Of, Amanda was late all the time. Where is she? <laughs> oh my god! Amanda was late all the time yeah. to flights. I I never miss a flight, but when I'm with her, she loses her license, and I'm like, ah! Beth loses seven <laughs> debit cards a month. <laughs> so yeah, she remembers that. But like right now, and I I would like to challenge you to like if you do have big money goals, if you mm. want the luxury house, if you want that, I want you to really do the inner work and say to yourself. Do I want this to host people in my house or do I want this because like, I don't know, it's a desire that God gave to me because I really wanted to be a billionaire. Like I was like, I'm gonna be the first millionaire. In my mm. Like it was so important to me. But now like my mom needs something, I got it. You know, I'd rather have that sort of calm, you know, than to feel like, burden to have to take care of everybody they're adults your parents are adults they made the decisions that they made mm -hmm. of course if they need you you're, you're there but i don't have that much pressure i don't put that much pressure on me my time is so much more valuable than money so when my dad does need me hey leslie can you come pick me up my i got a flat tire i don't have to call out to a job even if i'm consulting and i have a meeting i don't have to go i could say i'm not coming that's valuable that I can just make my own schedule. I I mean, I go, I'm going to San Francisco um, tomorrow. They know, like people know where I'm going to be. I don't have to be looking at my phone. I don't have to do that. Everything's pre-scheduled. I have my assistant. Look, can you do this for me? Mm. And I prefer that than a million dollars any day. Because what am I going to high rise for? Nobody comes to my house now. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nobody comes over now. So what am I, I'm not understanding why. Like, I, I mean, of course, yeah, the views are cool. Mm. But I'm at peace. Like, there's nothing else that I would want. Leslie, I'm going to just tell you something right now. I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to tell you something. Because this is... Y'all don't know Leslie before. I, when I met Leslie, she spoke to me for an hour and a half straight without me having to talk. Mm -hmm. I talk a lot. <gasps> okay, Rob. How you doing? I was like, yo, sweetheart, breathe. Hold on. That's because I'm coachable and I need to know what to do. That was it. Like, you need to tell me every single thing because I'm going to do it. Nah, so it if was, you tell me every little thing... It was a lot. That's how I was. I needed to know everything. I would read every book. And I, would, I can recite it probably from memory. Like, it says this, 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 this. I was crazy. And now I'm like, oh, I guess I'll read this book, I guess. And, you know, whatever. So here's what I first want to say. <laughs> I am, one, super proud of you. Thank right? you. I just want to let you know that honestly, genuinely, like, who you were then, who you are now. Yeah, What sure. you made me feel in this conversation, this was no nothing. I would never been able to do. Or felt what I felt having a conversation with you five years ago. No, for sure. At all. Mm -hmm. Secondly, here's my question. Mm -hmm. So if and when you set goals, mm -hmm. right, how do you go and get them mm -hmm. with this kind of faith-based, I do what I want? For me, help me here because all right, I'm you're making me want to yell and then get excited and then not do something at the same time. No, I, I'm going to be so transparent with you. I'm in a season your season can look completely different from my season. I'm in a resting period. I'm happy to be in a resting period. I'm getting to know the things that I love to do. I'm getting to know my body more. I'm getting to know God. I'm reading books about God. I'm, I'm digging into the Bible. Like that's my season. And I know I just told Amanda this before you got here. So God is going to tell me when to move. I, tr I trust that he'll speak to me and be like, okay, Leslie, it's time for you to do this. And I'll know. But I'm not in any rush to know what my purpose in life is. People put so much pressure. They're like, oh, I need to know what is God? What am I on earth for? What do you want to do today? And I told the man that this too. I said, your, the desires in your heart, God gave those to you. There's a reason why you want those things, right? So I'm not saying don't make goals. You know, I'm not saying like, it's, not, it's, not, it's okay to want a million dollars. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but really ask yourself why you want those things. Mm. Because can you have the things that you want without being a billionaire? Which which is great. If you want to be a billionaire, I'm not, let me tell you, I might be a billionaire one day. I don't know. I'm not right. marry a billionaire. That's more my, my speed, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, God. some, you know, some people are, you know, built for that. You know what I mean? But, and there's some people who are meant to be billionaires for a reason. And there's some people who are meant to work at McDonald's for the rest of their life for a reason. There's people, we need all those people. But when you're writing down your goals, I would suggest making it more. Um, you ever saw that video? about why Apple is one of the best companies in the world. I know they're one of the best companies in the world, but I didn't see the video. I mean, so there's a, lot a video 
And they talk about why they, they're the best, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people think of the end goal and then they go backwards, right? They think right. of the end goal and mm -hmm. then they think about the product mm -hmm. and then they go into the middle about why. Mm -hmm. But if you start with the why and you start with what the belief and what you want people to believe, they'll buy it just because they believe what you believe, right? So what do you believe? I believe that people are uneducated or undereducated about what healthy means, what bo healthy body looks like. A lot of the media has expressed that you have to look a certain way or be a certain weight or be whatever to be healthy. But there's science and proof and things that show that the genetics make a play into that. Some people have hormonal imbalances. And I want you to believe that a healthy body can look a whole bunch of different ways. And I want you to believe that the people in those different bodies are just as valuable as those people who have those bodies. Because you come up to me and you say, oh, ma, you look so good. You lost weight. Wow, you look great. And she's like, thanks, I'm going through chemo. Mm -hmm. She's the most unhealthy she's been in her whole life. And you're complimenting her on her weight. So I believe that I want to educate people about what healthy means. And stop commenting on people's bodies. So I can make a million dollars off of what I believe. Because there's so much to be learned. But I'm focused on who God is, who I am. And I can do little videos here and there and help the people that want and need that information. Um, we're going to be working with the National Eating Disorder Association um, with the company I'm consulting with. And it's important that not only do we uplift people in bigger bodies, that we uplift people in smaller bodies and you don't know that they're dealing with it and also men who have body image issues that toxic yeah you ever think about why they feel like they need to be like that mm -hmm. or a lot of a lot of men are insecure but nobody's talking about it there's no platform for it because it's like yo just grow up just get your body right bro stop complaining bro right. mind you they were abused their whole life and told don't eat because you look fat so now they're starving themselves or whatever. And you don't know that. Right, right. So that's my why. Mm. So people will buy a course because they're like, oh, I want to learn more about that. Maybe it's not for you, but it'll be for whoever it needs to be for. So if I make a million dollars off of that, I'm happy. If I don't, if I make a million dollars working at a health insurance company, I'm going to be miserable. Especially if I'm working 40 hours a week. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm going to tell you my takeaway. Because this is one of my fucking favorite people in the clap it up for my girl Leslie one time. <laughs> Look, honestly, honestly, if this is not get educated, don't be afraid to buy a course, know your why, and stay centered in your faith in one episode. If y'all don't like this episode, <laughs> go have a conversation with your mother. <laughs> that was in oh my this is my that's why you my man. That's my camera. <laughs> um you did a lot for me today. Like I hope this touched you like it touched me. Don't be afraid to buy a course because even though it's a course world, if it could shorten up the learning curve and get you closer to your why, go play tennis for two hours, date a billionaire if you have to in the future, get it how you want to. <laughs> Leslie, we appreciate you. Thank you for coming over. You could have been anywhere in the world where you're here with us. That's another episode of In The Living Room Podcast where we learn, laugh, and heal. Let's clap it up for that. <laughs>